you know, with everything that's gone on in this past year, um, we know it's been really difficult for artists specifically to be able to work in the capacity that they once did. And we thought it was important for them to be able to share their work and talk about why the arts are important to them and how they've persevered through this last year and how they've continued to work on becoming a better artist. Hi, my name is Callie Poole. Um, I'm a senior here at the University of Arizona and I'm currently majoring in dance. Um, and I'm from here in Tucson, Arizona. Um, I started dancing when I was three and my grandma got me into dancing. I was literally always at the studio. Like, if I wasn't dancing in studios, we were actually there cleaning the studios so that we could help pay for dance. Every day it was probably ballet, jazz, you know, I also grew up doing acro and tap and hip hop and um, I also did it competitively. When you grow up in competition, I feel like it's really, pre uh, there's a lot of pressure to be perfect. And I'm a perfectionist at heart. So as soon as I came here, I was already a perfectionist and everything. And I knew what I was good at and I knew what I wasn't good at. Um, and I think having been here, this is my fourth year here, I, uh, really just kind of discovered and rediscovered my love for dance and instead of just trying to be perfect all the time finding that feeling of joy in my movement and that feeling of performance because um, that's what I love to do I just want to perform you know I just want to dance I actually only auditioned for the University of Arizona um, senior year of high school for me was really hard family-wise so I knew that I wanted to dance but I didn't think I could go anywhere else but here in Tucson. Um, I was really fortunate enough to find out that I got into the University of Arizona's dance program in I think it was like November and so it was really early in the process and so as soon as I knew I was like I'm going like I'm staying here like it's gonna be good and I was really excited. Um, but personally, I also didn't know if I deserved it, honestly. Um, but I'm so glad that I'm here. <laughs> All of the faculty here at University of Arizona School of Dance is incredible. They really, really are. They, they've taken me here to where I am now, and I wouldn't have been able to get here without them. But um, one instructor in particular, her name is Amy Ernst. Um, she actually retired last year. But in her class, like, she just kind of took me under her wing and all the pieces that I got to do with her, you know, she really pushed my limits, but in a way that was nurturing and in a way that I really grew as an artist. Dance is important to me because it's always been my way of expressing myself. Um, growing up, I had a really hard time with letting people, other people know how I felt about certain situations and just kind of expressing myself in general. I'm super dyslexic, so words just don't always come out right. Um, but I always felt like with dance, I was able to say what I needed to say and express what I felt. And so whenever somebody asks me, oh, like, what do you want to do after dance? I'm just like, I'm going to dance as long as I possibly can because I know that like, that's what I love to do. So my name is Kevin Zuniga. Uh, I'm a senior here at the university. I'm in the BFA program for photography and I'm from Nogales, Arizona. My work, it represents, you know, like the hardworking people, you know, of Mexico in general. Like my project is mainly focused off in Nogales just because that's what I have for me, but that's also what I know best. You know, I've grown up in Nogales, Arizona. 
born and raised practically. So, you know, having that sister town always, you know, five minutes from me is a, you know, a huge blessing. And it was because I got to see everything. I got to see both sides. I got to see how, you know, real they are. I got to see how artificial we can be on this side, you know, from everything, you know, buildings to the way we act with other people. And you over there, I mean, yeah, you have your, a couple people out there that do that, but it's, I mean, like, for the majority of it, they're all just hardworking, real people that are, that just, they're genuine, they're people, you get me? They mean everything to me. You know, their work ethic, their, their respect, their humbleness, their, their strive, their hustle. It's just, it means everything to me. Hardworking people in general inspire me, so that ranges from every, and anybody. Like, you know, you know Mac Miller is one of my favorite artists, so I strive to, his lyrics mean a lot, you know, and play a lot of effect, especially when I'm taking photos. For the most part, I like to take photos with my earbuds. I just, I like to have music in the background, you know. I feel like, I don't know, I couldn't go a day without music, so especially music, the right music plays the right part. I chose the university because, you know, I felt like I was always meant to be a Wildcat in general. You know, I have photos as a, like, you know, as a baby, you know, like dressed up in university and like U of A stuff. So, you know, it's kind of like set in stone for me. So, and I couldn't be happier with it, honestly, because it's just a big melting pot here. So it's just, I, it's been awesome. Before I even stepped foot on the university, you know, um, before I was just doing a lot more, you know, landscape, portrait work, um, some style of street photography, but then I realized when I, once I got here that you know a picture does have a thousand words in it. I had to strive for that, and not just with anything that I've been doing recently. Like you know, I want to do something more real, a little bit more impactful. You know, and then so and, uh, ever since I've started to, I told anyone and everyone this too. Um, I've always had a feeling that you know my photography is going to take me somewhere. I'm really going to do big things with this, like. This, this isn't gonna be the last of who I am or like what you guys see. Like, it's gonna be, it's just gonna get bigger and better. My name is Bryce Kimball. I'm a senior at the Fred Fox School of Music as a piano performance major, and I'm from Tucson, Arizona. Music was always a big part of my life. My mom played Mozart CDs and Chopin CDs, and I just grew up with music in the house all the time. But the story my mom tells me is that one day I just asked for piano lessons and she took me in and it all started from there. Music's important to me because I think it expresses something that words can't exactly. It allows me to express how I'm truly feeling and communicate that within the audience that I couldn't with words. I had auditions all over the country. I was originally gonna go to Indiana because they were such a high, because they were so highly ranked for music. But I originally, I came to Arizona because the teachers here made me feel welcome and they kind of admitted me on the spot. They said, we're excited that you're here and I just felt really welcome. The U of A has given me lots of avenue, different avenues that I get to explore. I'm not only a musician, I also have a minor in sociology and another major in psychology. And my course load in the music building has always been adaptable to my needs and my interests. And my professors in the building in the Fred Fox School of Music have been really supportive of my academic adventures. I really want to thank Dr. John Milbauer. He's been my advisor, my guide, my teacher uh, for all my four years and even when he left for his sabbatical he was still a phone call or a text away and uh, it was very impactful on me. So I'll be playing Florence Price's Sonata in E minor. She's a black woman and she's the first black woman that premiered a symphony in all of America. So the piece I'm playing, she won second prize in the Wanamaker competition in Chicago and this year I've spent time researching her life and her works, and I've kind of put together a whole narrative of her life.
Uh, hi, I'm Mandy Sparts. Um, I am a graduating senior from Phoenix, Arizona, and I am getting my BFA in theater production with an emphasis in stage management. The first time I stage managed, I was 17. I did theater in high school. Um, I can't sing or dance, so I could never be in a musical. Um, and I was actively involved in swim in high school, so I couldn't really do plays either. But my, I still wanted to be involved. I went to my high school theater director and she stuck me in props. I decided to get into stage management because I didn't want to be making all of these props last minute during tech week. So I'm like, oh, if I'm, a, if I'm on the stage management team, I'll be more involved throughout the whole process. And by the way things worked out, I ended up calling um, the musical that year and I just fell in love with it. So to me, my work represents um, kind of the harmony and the combining of arts and very artistic styles with sort of like real, with the real world. Um, I take these very abstract concepts, ideas, feelings, and um, pull them down and communicate how to put it into something tangible that we can see, that we can feel, that we can hear. As a stage manager, our work is a little bit boring to look at, um, but the production book is, you could give this book to anybody who wanted to remount the show and they would have all the information to make it look exactly the same. And again, it's uh, very nitty gritty, the actual work that I can show, because um, it's uh, taking all of those elements. I think the most important thing that I do on a daily basis is I write the report. Um, which gets sent out to the whole design team, the whole artistic team, and says what we did that day and what we need if we're in a show, it's anything that went wrong. I've also done a lot of lighting work here at the U of A, and um, I was the master electrician for The Last Night of Ballyhoo, which really, really simply put is I plugged things in and made sure they turn on. Um, it's more than that, it's making sure that you do it safely, so it involves a lot of planning and calculations to make sure nothing will catch on fire, and that, um, like a stage manager, um, that it's a consistent show every night. So Jenny Lang, my um, stage management professor, she always gave me the space to question why we do things a certain way, and um, has always listened to me when I said, maybe we shouldn't do it like that anymore. And everything that I know comes from her, and she's fabulous. I'm really inspired by the people I, I work with, actors, designers, directors, dramaturgs, because um, I think they have all of this whole wealth of talent that I don't necessarily have myself. Um, and then a lot of my drive comes from the desire to want to put on something good, to want to um, entertain people and um, to really put a good product out. So as far as you know, technical and th theatrical experience goes, Almost all my experience comes from here. And while I was here, I was able to do um, some internships and I got a couple of jobs through Jenny Ling's suggestions. So it's really given me a lot of experience. And then um, again, it's made me more aware and um, yeah, it's made me more aware about different communities and cultures. Um, and it's really inspired me it's really spurred um, this desire to want to make the theater industry more equitable and more accessible for everyone. I'm Atlas Woodsmith. I'm a senior. I am in the BFA program for film and television, and I'm from Oregon, largely, because I'm from the north and the south part. I'm from Oregon. So my senior film is titled Fallacy. It's based on my experiences as a, a trans gay man, but specifically kind of like my interactions with other trans masculine people. Um, just kind of that connection where, uh, depending on how far you are into your transition, you can put other transmasculine people above you and you think like you're less than them. There's not a lot of content having to do with that so I've felt like if I don't make it no one else will but in general it's just kind of about like self-confidence and self-worth and like we're all just kind of people living our lives. <laughs> Look at me. You should at least give him a chance.
it could go really good. So I think what sparked my interest in film was probably just watching a lot of uh, media when I was younger. I feel like like I consumed a lot of content kind of just on my own because it was kind of like a inside kid. <laughs> so I think it and then and then I think when I was older, uh, I started getting more into YouTube and kind of a more modern artistic platform. I don't really want to make feature films. That's not really my dream. So I feel like watching a lot of YouTube content when I was younger uh, shaped that. My goal for the future is to eventually end up in Austin, Texas. I want to work for Rooster Teeth Productions. I actually went to school so I could get an internship at Rooster Teeth because you had to be enrolled in school to do that. I was thinking about maybe doing the unfocused energy, I'll just go out and like work in film thing, but I wanted to be able to get an internship there, so I went to school. So some people that have really affected my U of A experience would be my professor, Michael McCahey. He just in general has been very supportive. He cares about his students. He doesn't just care that they're meeting their deadlines. He cares about how they're doing. He cares to understand um, what they're going through or what their experiences, experiences are. He said that he was lucky to teach for our program. And I told him that we were lucky to have him in so many ways for his talent but also for his heart and what he gives to the program in both of those aspects. By going to the University of Arizona, the specific, uh, specifically within the film program, it's more than I think most public universities have. And obviously there's room for improvement within the film program. You can ask any film student that, but, what we, I'm, but I'm grateful for what we do have. And I'm grateful for the investments that we do have at the University of Arizona. I'm Jenna Meadows. I'm a senior BFA musical theater major in the School of Theater, Film, and Television, and I'm originally from Woodland Hills, California. My name is Cameron Elias. I am a senior BFA musical theater major in the School of Theater, Film, and Television, and I'm originally from Sacramento, California. So I started performing at a really young age. Uh, I'm told that West Side Story was actually the first movie that I ever showed interest in uh, before I could speak or sing or anything. I had my first role, I guess, when I was 10 years old, which was Susan Waverly in White Christmas. And I have like a 30 second song in it. And I just will never forget that moment standing there at the end and I was like, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Just, it, I never had felt more welcome and accepted by a community ever in my life. And so after that, I just continued to perform and you know, did shows all throughout high school and here we are. I chose to study theater at the University of Arizona because when I was looking for a program, I, I really wanted to find a place that would teach me the individual there have been so many wonderful highlights and memories throughout my four years at the university. Uh, one of my more recent highlights would be my honors thesis, Capstone, which I worked on with a classmate of mine, Tony. We, together, we created, produced, and will be performing a cabaret featuring the work of Jewish musical theater composers. Working on my thesis has been a really special experience because not only did I get to collaborate with one of my classmates, but I've also learned how to create and produce my own work, which I think will be a very useful tool um, post-graduation. One of my favorite things that I enjoyed working on here at UA was Spring Awakening. It was the spring musical um, in 2019 at Arizona Repertory Theater. and. This piece of theater is a lot more challenging to the brain and it's a little bit more out there, but I really enjoyed telling the story to these audiences and seeing their reaction because it wasn't one I expected. I really thought they were going to be against this piece and not have an open mind and seeing people leave thinking about the stories and the subject matter that was talked about in this play just made me realize this is why we do it. We want to make people think, we want to change people's perspective or stress a certain perspective. 
I think theater is really special because sharing a laugh or a cry or even an unwanted or unexpected moment with an audience is a really unique experience. You know, it's something I wouldn't trade for the world. I think theater unites and it creates this really magical sort of relationship between actor and audience. Theater just teach it everything has a lesson. Whether you're seeing a comedy or you're seeing a drama, every there is something that can be taken away from everything. So if I can give someone a smile on their face, a tear to cry, something to go home and think about, that's us doing our job in society. So my classmate, roommate Cameron and I are doing a song, a Jason Robert Brown song called All Things in Time. And I it's one of it's one of my favorite songs of his. I really love this piece because I think it's an important reminder for everyone that it, it, it's going to be okay. Things are going to be okay. I think it relates to, you know, where our country is at, where the theater industry is at, where me personally as a graduating senior, where I'm at. Um, it's a good reminder to worry about only the things that you can control and let go of the rest. All things in time, if not today, if not tomorrow, but all things in time, we can't predict what comes to pass. Say